would like to introduce Jim Farnham. Jim Farnham is the brains behind the MATA system, and he's going to tell us a little bit why he did it, how he did it, the applications he's seen it successful in, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to let Jim know. Jim, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it. She covered it in a nutshell. It is a wireless uh, system to allow you to monitor or re remotely track and trend, you know, different metrics at a property, um, covering HVAC to the presence of water, you know, uh, uh, just so on and so on, humidity. Uh, we've got some, uh, it, it's not a security-based system, but you can get some security benefits from motion sensors and, uh, you know, loss of pressure on coils for coil theft and things like that. One of the ideas behind it is that it's an all-in-one stop shop. You know, we can, it's not just temperatures or, or HVAC or just refrigeration. It can kind of do a lot of things. So one system can perform a lot of different beneficial things for you. And we wanted to make it simple and web-based so that you can access it through uh, any computer at home, uh, you know, work, a tablet PC, your phone. I do about 80% of the work and set up through my phone, which is kind of funny when you think about it. It works on a very small screen even. So uh, I'm going to start up our, our presentation here, and I'll get going, cover off some of the details. All right. The MATA system, it does do all, all of these things very well, very versatile. So I'll start here with the... Uh, as you can see here, in a nutshell, standalone wireless system, you deploy a series of small battery powered sensors, okay, they're about the size of a deck of cards. I have a water sensor here in front of me. Uh, entirely battery powered off of common batteries, which is nice, just double A batteries, okay. In this case, we chose the lithium ion batteries that give you the longest shelf life. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be happy to know that most of our sensors enjoy a, you know, 10 year plus battery life, which is great. You don't have to go change them very often, which is key. Water sensor can be more than 12 years. A temperature sensor giving 20 minute readings can last more than 10 years, that's, that's great. If you add up the time and expense of changing batteries, it actually adds up over the years. So, you know, having them last that long is, is a good benefit. Um, the base station there is a uh, cellular enabled base station, uses a cell modem in it, so we don't need any other kind of, uh, you know, you don't need to have a uh, ethernet connection or landline phone. Is that me? Did that noise come out of me just now? Oh my goodness. I might have to move this mic. I, I hadn't even eaten anything yet. That's, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So yeah, you, you don't require a landline phone or anything like that. Thanks. Should I wear this one too? Is that better, everyone? Can you hear me? All right. It's another wire. I hope I don't get wet up here. I'm going to cook myself. Okay, we also have, okay, so we have the cellular modem in there. It doesn't require anything else. We also have an Ethernet version of our base station out as well for those that, that don't want the cellular, uh, the reoccurring cost of, of, of the monthly fee on the cellular. Now, uh, it's very affordable and, and reasonable. About the price of a landline phone gets you uh, 10 megabytes of data, and that's quite a bit. That's up to 10 sensors, you know, operating throughout the month, so it's pretty good. There are some benefits of the cellular backup is that if you lose power, you, you still get the data, which is one of the one of the key times when you want to get that information. But we do have an Ethernet version uh, available now. It says soon, but we actually have it available, um, and it is it uh, has a battery backup in the unit, so our cellular modem will actually run for up to two days on its backup battery. So you can lose power for quite some time and still get the data. It's nice. We use a very low frequency, 350 megahertz. We're, we're FCC certified. We won't interfere with other products. Uh, and that lower frequency helps us get through and around buildings, walls, uh, you know, like that. It, it, for a battery-powered solution, our range is, is extraordinary, I, I, I think, and I think one of those is because of that low frequency, you know. The, uh, the idea behind it is that you have a, a fairly simple conduit for the information to get from your building via the sensors through the base station. It, gets, it just pushes the data to the web server. And that's the other side of this thing is that you have a web portal uh, that, that DMI hosts for you, and that's where the data re resides. And that is where you interface with the data. You can view it and graph it, trend it, export it, 
more importantly, you can set your alerts and your alarms, all done through the one, you know, through the one web portal. So you don't have to configure things manually in the field. It's all done through the portal, which is nice. So you get access to it from anywhere. Let's see. There's two sides to the system where I think the main benefits come. And, and we're still finding benefits even today as, as people think of new ways to use it. But the, one of the biggest is custom alerts. Uh, just like with a lot of systems, the ability for it to alarm you when certain parameters are, are met can really help you. You know, if, if water is detected in a, uh, you know, near a sump pump, it, you can go take a look at it. If a refrigerator uh, or freezer unit is getting too warm, you, you, you want to be actively alerted. Our, our portal allows you, you know, it's called alarm logic, but you can set it, you know, a myriad of ways to kind of fit your needs. That's one of the, the things that, that keeps it, uh, you know, beyond a lot of other systems is that it's very versatile right now. So you set the alarms, you can act it in a positive way or a negative way. Uh, you can set the alarms any time, any number of ways, triggering to be sent to individual people. We can do uh, text messaging, we can do email alerts, you can do alphanumeric pagers, and of course once you can send an email you can do Twitter and Facebook and, and, and everything else. So it's a very quick way to get your alerts and all of the information about what is being alarmed can be sent to you on, on your phone. You can uh, actually set, every sensor can, can be given a custom field, every alarm on what you want it to show up on your email or your phone, which I think is very beneficial because you can even go so far as to say this refrigerator unit is above you know so much uh, temperature, please notify Tom at this number. You, you can put all that detail into these alerts. So you don't even have to log into the system once you, you know, problems there, you, you actually know about it quickly and all the details are there. A couple of quick examples, 4400 College, they uh, very unfortunate building design. It's an electrical room, a uh, elevator control room, and a fire sprinkler riser room all in one. So I guess uh, you know one to three times a year something would happen with the fire sprinkler pump in that room, the, the riser, and it would leak. And unfortunately it shares the room with the electrical, so it would get several feet deep and blow out the $30,000 transformer. That happened several times and, and this flooding would happen one or two, three times a year because it was a dry system, you know, it was a dry sprinkler system. Within the first two weeks of putting a, a, a uh, MATA system in here, it alerted them that there was water present near that pump and they were able to get there and shut it off before it crossed the room and caused this trouble. So that's a very direct, you know, cause and effect. You, you, you can get there and, and ward off a, a catastrophe. Half inch deep of water is one thing, two feet deep is another, another story entirely. Uh, 9221, a boiler tripping off. Uh, they were notified, you know, in, in the winter time, be, be, you know, before everyone went home, they knew it had tripped off and could reset it in time so that it wouldn't super cool overnight. And then the Darth Vader building, you can see that's a 7101 college, had the unfortunate, uh, they have an older system running their uh, outside economizers and uh, I guess the uh, linkage broke one night, left the economizer open in the winter time. Uh, the uh, free stats tripped like they were supposed to but those coils continued to get cold. There's nothing there to tell them that it was still getting cold and they, they ended up damaging the coils and they had to, to replace them at about $90,000. A pop, I, I suppose. Very expensive and an $89 sensor, you know, approximately. Could have told them that. And then they could have gotten up there and as I understood it, uh, one gentleman manually could have closed the uh, the economizer and prevented that, that, that problem. I just one little lever to close. But it was knowing about it was the key and that's that's what this system's all about is gathering the information, you know. Four times out of five when there's a problem with one of these units, someone's got to go anyway to maintain it. So someone's going to be on site to you know, replace the uh, the fan belt on the motor, or you know, manually close these the, these louvers. There's nothing to control, but knowing about it is is really a challenge. And and so that's what the custom alerts on the Mattis system is all about: is it's notifying you soon, and in a way that you guys want. You can tailor it to as many people as you want, and and different types of uh, messages. Now, the other side of the system, this is one of my favorite, is uh, I, I have a a background in, in mathematics, uh, minor in statistics, so. This is, is very interesting to me, is that once you start gathering the data, the initial goal of the system was to let me know when there's a problem. So that's great, okay, it, it gets too warm, it lets you know. 
the roof hatch is open, you know, the water, you, you know about it. But over time, the MATA system allows you to keep the data for, for up to a year. So, so, so you actually can trend this information you're getting over some, some time. And actually, after you start graphing it out and trending this data, you, you pick up patterns. And, and, and even with a battery-powered solution where you're maybe not getting real-time data down to the second, maybe you're just getting every 20 minutes, mathematically, that's still enough information for you to infer some really complicated uh, patterns out of this data. And from that, you can tell such things as if your time clocks are off and maybe you're running when you're not supposed to, maybe a Saturday night you're, you're using more energy than you think, or uh, you can actually start comparing, you know, uh, uh, discharge air temperature to outside air sensors and you might find ways to adjust your system to run a little bit more economically. Uh, there's a lot of energy savings to be had here and in almost every installation where we've put these in and we've started graphing data over time, even by, by accident, we'll put them in saying, well, let's just put a reading there. We can start building up some data so you can see the graphing and trending. Cap we've actually found, uh, you know, areas where they can make improvements and save money. Uh, one of the first one was the Bank of America building at 95th of Monrovia. The MATA system in that building was measuring the discharge air temperature. And we noticed that in the hot summer time, the building was scheduled to come on at 3 a.m. because it was kind of an older system and it required some time to, to uh, you know, get up to speed so people are comfortable by 7 a.m. because it had kind of gotten too warm. Well, we were coming on at 3 a.m. to do that. So by trending the discharge air temperatures and the internal space temperatures on the same graph, we were able to see it was only taking about an hour to an hour and a half to actually cool the building. So every night in the summer, we went from starting at 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. That's 10 hours of run time in a given week all through the summer, now year after year. It's considerable. And those compressors, you know, there's six of them. They're about the size of this podium. So it's a, it's a lot of energy that we saved. And that was within the first two weeks of, of, of installation. And now since then, we're actually able to, you know, verify it and maintain it. And then when that gets off again, the, the schedule can, can, can get off. Uh, the time clocks, you know, power outages, we can actually see those, those, those changes. The Chinook Library was in, interesting. Uh, in a lot of cases, a smaller building like that doesn't need a gigantic control system. They've just got a thermostat on the wall. And they've instructed their people when they go home at night that please, you know, turn the thermostat up or down, you know, accordingly, and put the system in and found out that they weren't doing that. So this whole time, they, they, they were never turning the, the stat up or down, just a big waste. The management was very appreciative to know that and was able to, you know, talk to other people and, and, and get them doing that. And that was very important to them. That was saving them energy. Uh, the PNC bank temperatures, uh, in this case here, we, we use some humidity sensors to be able to adjust the amount of outside air coming into these branches. You know, the, the uh, bank customers or, or any company that has multi, you know, a multitude of locations around can attest to how expensive it is to modernize those buildings. And in some cases, their older properties can't really afford the uh, state-of-the-art systems, but they want to get the benefit of, of gathering the data and being able to make changes. Uh, PNC really liked this system because they didn't want things piggybacking onto their existing networks, you know, from security uh, standpoint. So they really liked the, the complete standalone solution that the that the MATA system has here with the cellular system. Um, and then, in you know, in, in that case, they were actually able to start comparing building to building. <coughs> one building would be performing very well, and another one not so much. And now they could go and actually start trying to figure out why. And in some cases, they were able to do that. So the trending is very powerful, I would say. Over time, you know, the ability to get that data in and, and visually graph it and look at it is very helpful. It doesn't have to be just temperatures, too. I mean, we've done hu humidities, uh, uh, you know, AC electrical current and, and, and some other